Moving on to hypothesis testing. This is a long topic, so we're going to break it down into sections to make it easy to remember. Let's start with the basic question. What is a hypothesis? It is a statement about a value of a population. So basically, it is a forecast of some population parameter. For example, here we have a population, and we want to know the average age of the population. There are three types of hypotheses. Testing for equivalence. Greater than and less than. For example, analyst 1 believes the average age of the population is not equal to 18. Analyst 2 believes the average age is greater than 18, and the third analyst believes the average age is less than 18. The very first step in any hypothesis test is to state the hypothesis. H0 is the null hypothesis, and HA is the alternative hypothesis. A good trick to remember which is which is that whatever the analyst believes will become the alternative hypothesis. So, if analyst 1 believes the mean is not equal to 18, that is the alternative, and the null, will be the opposite. Analyst 2 believes the mean is greater than 18, so the null is the opposite. We do the same for analyst 3. Pay attention to the signs when writing a hypothesis. Remember that the null hypothesis will always include some form of the equal sign. Now let's go over the big picture of what we're going to do in the next learning outcomes. If you understand the next few steps, you'll be able to solve any hypothesis test, no matter if it's a z-test, t-test, f-test, etc. Great. So, once you state the hypothesis, step number two is to visualize the graph to avoid making mistakes. Ask yourself, is it a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test? The easiest way to know is by looking at the alternative hypotheses. If it is testing for equality, it's a two-tailed test. If it is greater than, it's a right-tailed test. And if it's less than, it's a left-tailed test. Notice that these areas right here contain what's called the degree of confidence. For example, if the researchers want to test their hypotheses with 90% confidence, then these areas would be 90%. The probability that remains in the tails is 10%, which is also known as alpha. Notice how for the two-tailed test, we split alpha evenly between the two tails. But for the one-tailed tests, the entire value of alpha is contained in a single tail. So we visualize the graphs. But now what? How do we actually test the hypothesis? For more videos like these, go to wallstreetnotes.com and master the entire CFA curriculum by watching simple animated videos.